สวัสดีครับกษิตพิรมยา once again and this time I will talk a bit about the Myanmar crisis as a consequence of the coup d'état in February of last year. Which uh, more or less has not been completed, namely that the military junta so far has not been able to complete the process of the coup d'état in uh, having the complete control of the country, because the democratic forces of Myanmar have joined hands to oppose military takeover. Of the political arena, and the situation at this moment is more like a civil war between the masses of the people in general, who want freedom and democracy against the authoritarian uh, military government, and uh, to help solve the problem. The international community has more or less decided, uh, or of the view, that the responsibility to help solve the Myanmar crisis should lie with the ASEAN community, namely with the other nine members of the ASEAN community. Myanmar is uh, the number ten member, so it should be solved. By the ASEAN family, the Myanmar problem is a family problem. From the eyes and understanding of the international community, which I think it's rightly so, is correct. I have no argument with that. But for the past 15 months, the effort or the attempt by the ASEAN community to help solve. The Myanmar crisis has not proceeded accordingly. There's no success so far, and in spite of the fact that the ASEAN, together with Myanmar, were able to come out with a five-point five consensus in April of last year for the military authorities to end the fighting. To start negotiating with all the stakeholders, and to allow the humanitarian assistance to take place, and at the same time, the ASEAN ASEAN also agreed to appoint a special envoy to help realize the five-point consensus, or simply to help. The return of democracy to the Myanmar political theater, or namely to talk to the military authorities and the opposition to arrange for the, I think, transition back to democracy. But that has not been a sort of a success story because there are many differences among the ASEAN members. How much and how far? How tough? Or reconciliatory, the other nine member states of ASEAN should uh, behave towards the military junta in n e p a d o r the capital of Myanmar. And I think the appointment of the special envoy on behalf of the ASEAN chair last year it was Brunei in the chair of ASEAN. At the moment, it is. Cambodia in the chair of ASEAN, and next year it will be the turn of Indonesia. So Brunei, as the chair of ASEAN, did appoint its own special envoy, and now Cambodia has its own special envoy to act on behalf of the chair and the ASEAN as a whole in the name of the Cambodian Foreign Minister. But so far, the work of the special envoy has not proceeded smoothly. 
not much of I think uh, respect and attention forthcoming from the military junta of Myanmar neither the special envoy has been able to get the consensus of the other ASEANs and so on uh, as how to deal with the military junta and there is still the hesitation on the part of the special envoy and so on to start talking to the opposition side, the democratic forces of Myanmar and so on. So it, because there is disagreement among the uh, other nine ASEAN members of as to what I instruction they all together should, should give to the special envoy. But special, the instruction could not be forthcoming because there are still differences. Uh, among the ASEAN member. So I think the special envoy position is somewhat in limbo and the ASEAN collective uh, forces to deal with the junta has not been moving forward and in that sense then uh, the international community started to realize that it cannot place all the responsibility on the shoulders of the ASEAN community because there's problem inside ASEAN. So the international community would also have to take some responsibility and then that could I think be done by the UN Secretary General. Okay, He has that overall mandate and so on to find peace and to uh, find solution to conflicts and so on. Uh, so he could do that. Then uh, that's on, on the one hand. On the other hand is we could look for some of the senior members of the international community especially in the Asia Pacific region and I think two big countries in the areas are India which has common border with Myanmar and has already been receiving some of the Myanmar refugees inside India and so on then the other one is uh, Japan which uh, from the historical point of view has a very long relationship with the military establishment of Myanmar because Japan when it was occupying Myanmar during the Second World War did help to s the Myanmar people to set up an army and they succeeded in doing so so that's that historical relationship between the military establishment of Myanmar and, uh, and Japan okay at the same time, you know, since the end of the Second World War, Japan has been, I think, a sort of a number one country in terms of economic, overall economic relationship with Myanmar. Development aid, grant aid, technical assistance, investment, the bilateral trade and so on. So Japan has been very active directly with Myanmar and through the Asian Development Bank, which Japan is a major uh, what you call the uh, shareholders and so on has been very active also so Japan has been active in Myanmar on two front two, two, uh, two front one bilaterally and second through the Asian uh, Development Bank okay uh, so in that sense uh, Japan has some sort of an obligation to ensure peace and development in Myanmar then uh, but what instigated me to place a lot of emphasis on Japan is because of the fact that when the Russian leadership decided to invade Ukraine, Japan has joined the United States and the Western world in condemning the behavior of Russia in joining the a very comprehensive sanctions against Russia. So Japan has been very active in the defense of democracy in the European theater, namely at the Ukraine-Russian uh, conflict and so on. So the question that I would like to pose to all of you and to the Japanese government is that if you could defend democracy in Europe, what about Japan defending democracy in Southeast Asia, in Myanmar in particular? What have you been doing? Why is Japan so quiet? Why is Japan standing on the side and do not take, does not take as active role that it has taken on the Ukraine-Russia front? So what I'm saying to you now and also I think uh, seeking for your uh, 
assistant and so on is that we collectively should tell our Japanese friends that it's about time now that they take a very active role, proactive role to help solve the Myanmar crisis, to bring back democracy to Myanmar. It is an obligation, a responsibility that Japan cannot avoid. And Japan could speak to all the stakeholders of Myanmar directly. At the same time, Japan could also work closely with ASEAN, with the ASEAN Special Envoy, as well as with the UN Secretary General Special Envoy for Myanmar. So Japan could play that coordinating role. And why this, this political, uh, I think, uh, preparation will be an ongoing process, Japan at the same time can work very closely with both the Indian government and with the Thai government to provide the necessary humanitarian assistance cross-border. Japan could do that a lot. Japan could sit down with the Thai government and possibly with uh, some of the UN agencies like uh, UNICEF, UNHCR and so on to work together in a more coordinated manner to provide humanitarian assistance at the Thai-Myanmar border, at the India-Myanmar border and across the border into Myanmar proper as a whole. This is what Japan could done. It is in the position to do it. It has the resources. It has the goodwill, both of the Myanmar people of all sides and as well as the people of Southeast Asia nation and as well as India. So let's urge Japan to be more proactive. It cannot be just active on the Ukraine front and ignoring or forgetting what's going on in Myanmar at this point in time. So thank you very much. Thank you very much.